राधे राधे देवेश राधे राधे नमस्ते नमस्ते हाउ आर यू हाउ आर यू आई एम वेल या नाइस टू सी यू या या इट्स ग्रेट टू सी यू अगेन इट्स बीन हाफ ईयर आई थिंक सिंस वी सॉ इच अदर टुडे आई एम इन धर्मशाला माय होम टाउन एंड इट्स अराउंड 3:30 आफ्टरनून वेल आई एम इन ब्रिस्बेन ऑस्ट्रेलिया and it's four and a half hour difference from india and australia so it's about 8 o'clock 8 p.m now so let me introduce you to my friends today we have uh, my friend here mr david lazar and he's a award winning photographer from australia and he's um, he's been doing the photography for quite a few years and his great photos are being selected for quite a few magazines on all over the world including a national geographic magazine also David, you can tell about yourself a little bit. Um, so yeah, well, I've been doing photography since two thousand and four. So that's now coming up to yeah, sixteen years of photography, and it uh, it all started from my first trip, which was to India. Actually, that was my first big trip away from two thousand and four, and after that, I got very inspired to to. get into travel photography because i saw other people's photographs from india and then from around the world and i thought this is such a great genre of photography to photograph people from different worlds and of different ethnicities and different scenes and for some reason i was just really drawn to these sorts of photos very an emotional level like i yeah i just love seeing people who live in their life differently to how i live in australia and uh yeah so i got very in- into photography and every year after that i would continue traveling You said you uh, traveled to India when you were in uh, in your uh, in your uni university. Actually, after university, I think university. I just finished my masters in music. So I studied music at the university okay. and writing music for film. And mm-hmm. I think I just it was at the end of that because yeah, two thousand four. I was done, just finished uni that year. So. Okay. So so what do you think about your first journey when you were came to India? When you think about India, <laughs> how do you put? into words what makes india so interesting and amazing yeah it's an emotional journey for sure because you are experience experience things on such strong levels um it's so it's just such a such a memorable experience to travel in india i think yeah. and it's like a roller coaster I've always thought you know it's like ups and downs and highs and lows yeah the highs of what you remember and they're extreme yeah. highs and you know you see so many interesting people and um yeah the culture is just so strong in india and so unique it's so different from every other country in the world yeah. you know many countries have similarities i would say you know especially in the western world and maybe southeast asia too there's some similarities there but india is just on its own its own yeah. level there it's yeah it's amazing and the people are so friendly and so interested and social i think like yeah. in many countries maybe people are living in their boxed up houses and they're not meeting interacting much on the street yeah in india it's the opposite like everyone's interested to talk to you and you just get yeah so yeah. social and such a great community feeling there right? being around lots of people i think that makes you feel happy to get to interact with so many wonderful people and then with that of course there's also the food and the bollywood and i love the music the music of india is absolutely sublime like there's nothing yeah it's amazing how how, how much great culture there is in india so as i know like um, you not only have a talented photographer you are a very good musician also so uh, can you tell about uh, like what music you play and and the most important question how you combine your photography art and the music you are master in the both of them yeah well so i've been playing piano since i was 5 years old so all my life i've been playing the piano and i'm teaching piano also at the moment and uh written m- m- much music for film but yeah i've always done a lot of improvising i studied everything classical and modern pop and jazz blues but improvising has been a big forte strength for me so mm-hmm. being able to make up music on the spot and Um and a lot of indian music has maybe got a bit of an improvisation quality i think very virtuosic in the music and i really love that and i i really love yeah virtuosic fast music and complicated rhythms and 
Um, but yeah, as for what's the connection between music and photography, I don't think there is a really obvious one. Maybe the connection is that they both require a lot of patience and dedication to it. Yes, I think you can't so. get bored easily to be good at either of these. Like you have to be able to spend a long time repeating the same thing. Yeah, you know, for music, you've got to practice really a lot and not get sick of playing a song. And for photography, yeah, it takes a lot of a lot of time to get a good photo. It's not that easy. You've got to spend yeah, a lot yeah. of hours out out and about. And editing in Photoshop requires a heaps of heaps of patience. So how did you go got into the photography? That like, yeah, I, I'm self taught with the photography. I didn't study it at all at okay. university or any classes, but I was inspired by other photographers. So okay. I guess I learned it from analyzing other people's photographs that I really liked. Mm -hmm. And those those started off by being portraits mm -hmm. of people, and I was just so drawn to these portraits, and I found so much emotion in portraiture. So yeah, I, I tried practicing myself when I would then travel and try to get used to talking to people and asking if I could take their photo. And, and then you start to really think about, and you, yeah, you can look at why your photos are not very good and analyze that. And you start to see how important light is, you know, good yeah. quality light and a background that is appropriate to the, to the person. And then slowly, yeah, I taught myself how to take better photos. Over time, yeah, lots, lots of years. Mm. So, um, like, uh, you're not only, uh, as I told you, not only a good photographer, you're a good musician also. And I can add one more thing: you are good leader also. So oh, you got a uh, like. Um, now you're like. Um, I want to share with my friends that uh, David, uh, not only a photographer, he leads the photography tours, uh, mostly in Asia and also in Mother India. So when did you start like uh, travel photography? Mm, yeah, well, I started the travel photography in 2004, and then I was entering a lot of competitions in 2008 and 9, 10, 11, and that was a big platform for me to get some success, even if you don't win a competition, but you get highly commended or something, mm -hmm. your name could be printed on a website article with your photos. So I kind of got a lot of exposure through competitions. Mm -hmm. Then in 2013, I got an email from a company called Luminous Journeys yes. from uh, Bennett Stevens. Yeah, so he wanted... He was just setting up a me and my photography tour. Um, yeah, Luminous Journeys is a, it is a tour company in Myanmar and they were expanding into photography tours. So he wanted me to come and join the Myanmar photographer um, as a Westerner and lead a tour there because he'd seen my Myanmar photography online and I'd been to Myanmar twice at that point. So that worked out well, and we then continued to expand to new countries outside of Myanmar. So since 2014, I've been working for Luminous Journeys as a photo tour leader, which is helping people and giving people opportunities to take great photos by creating a great itinerary. And then, you know, helping people to get good photos and showing them composition ideas and showing them Photoshop tips. Um, yeah, and I really love doing that. It's so much fun. I really enjoy spending the whole day with people. And it's really great for me to have that energy for such an intense period of time for a few weeks, yeah. which the tours give. So, so we do photo tours in Bhutan and um, Vietnam, Bali, um, uh, Myanmar, of course, uh, India, and yeah, we do Japan, Southeast Asia. So yeah, the like, tours I really love to do it and I enjoy working with people and trying to lead it and be very clear with the trip and make sure it's a success. Mm -hmm. And then I love working with you, Vikas, because you, you of course work with me on those tours when we do it with ECNO in India. And you do such a great job and I have to say your leadership is amazing. And, and I'd like to thank you, like of all of us, like uh, the guests who came with you from the Luminous Journey. So, uh, like, uh, um, you travel, uh, lead the photography tours, like almost many uh, countries. But do you have any favorite, favorite place? Doesn't have to be India. You, need to <laughs> <laughs> you can tell anything to me. It's a hard. That's a hard question. Yeah, I, know I mean, hard. when people ask what my favorite countries are to travel to, I usually say Myanmar and India. Yeah, the most joy and emotion and successful photos from these countries. Okay. Um, and as for the photo tours, I mean, I love them all. They're all really great. The Bali tour is really great because it's so colourful there in Bali. And it's really hard to choose from all these great opportunities that we're yeah. given. And we're so lucky to do so, to get to travel. Not at the moment, of course. Are you missing yeah. not travelling, Vika? 
yeah of course you know like uh, mm. this is after i think few years uh, been stayed for three months continue in my home so i never like, uh, yeah so i'd stay like one month or maximum two months and i have to go for tours and i'm used to travel so you know even my my family can tell my friends can tell oh, i'm not feeling very good at home now i need to go somewhere but still everyone in same boat now so i miss a lot we not been traveling yeah yeah, I'm missing also the, the fun and adventure that you get from traveling and the change and yeah. always interacting with lots of people. Like you don't get that as much when you're staying in the, in yeah. your home, yeah. which we have to do, but yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah. Do you have any idea of when you think India might be ready for travelers to come back, when it might open again for tourists? Definitely it's not opening until 21. So 2020 will all shut down. So. It's like uh, in India, they slowly started opening the state borders. So domestic tourism started in some places start moving like a uh, place mm. where I live in Dharamshala. So this opened up the borders for domestic tourism. So the few people are, okay. people are still scared to travel, but the brave people, they're traveling. So we have a little movement after, after a few months, we can see some people from outside. Uh, neighboring mm. states or neighboring districts, not from the long far, not, not South India, not Mumbai, but some people from Punjab or Chandigarh. Or, yeah, hopefully, it's it works really... because if you see, if you stay positive, then uh, there's so many companies are soon they're ready to launch the vaccines. They, lots of good news coming every day that vaccines are uh, being like successful and they're coming soon in the market. And uh, mm. the fear is gone. That in the beginning, people are so afraid of things, not, but now people are moving, they're not scared at all, like like they used to a couple of months back. Mm. Now people are comfortable with mm. their life is getting slowly normal, back to back to the track and uh, recovering rate is very good in India, so medicines are working quite good. Now, as my last friend who are in the you know, last meeting with the Zoom with my friend, he said, like, one day we suddenly wake up with the news that there's a vaccine has been launched and within few months everything will be all right because you know human nature this if you the medicine, medicine everything comes they forget soon the bad time and, and then life will come to the plan track very soon so we'll yeah, forget. Hope very that soon we'll forget all oh, there was a covid 19 someday yeah. right yeah. Uh, i have another question that for you that um, which is your favorite subject like portraits or landscape or what can you enjoy most or what you like Ah, well, that's easy for me. Uh, it's people photography. I really love people and portraits. So it can be close-up portraits of faces that are full yeah. of character and powerful faces. Also, people in a wide scene. But I really love it when there's people in the photograph because I think it adds extra emotion to the photo. And yeah. I'm all about my art being emotionally captivating and interesting. And if I can get an emotive reaction from the viewer, then I feel really satisfied. Yeah. Of course, you can get that with landscape too, but it's I think it's a little bit harder to find these wonderful landscapes. Yeah, uh, I've, got, I've, I've got a few landscapes compared to my people photos. There's lots of people everywhere, and yes, I find it easier to shoot people personally. Yeah, like yeah, I can tell easily that you have lots of portraits, very beautiful portraits, being in uh, in your galleries, you know, published in the galleries mm -hmm. and magazines. So I see most of the portraits being selected, and also you know. I saw, uh, like you shared last time, uh, uh, you shared your uh, for beautiful photos in social media, in uh, Facebook. So like we got lots of likes. Even I share on my portal, and it's everybody loves that pictures. People are sharing your uh, posts and things. You are very active also in the social media. You know, you are sharing things on Facebook. You have Instagram. So can you tell about a little about your Instagram or you know, Facebook or your YouTube channel or anything? your website and people can look at it. Yeah, yeah. I really like Instagram at the moment. And um, it, for me, it's David Lazar photo. That's my name for my account. Okay. Instagram, yeah, Facebook, I also like, but um, for photographers, Instagram, I seem to get more reaction and engagement, I think, from, yes. from people. Yeah. I don't know why, maybe it's an algorithm thing, but yeah, I'm finding for photography, Instagram is the best for me to be sharing. And I try to post something every two days to try to stay active because it would be easy to just leave it for a little bit. But I think it's important to be constantly posting, yeah. maybe not too much. So yeah, my balance that I've found is every two days a post 
I have to do it. I try to force myself to do it no matter what. So it becomes a routine. And yeah. I think that's helped me to gain followers. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of people share my photos on Instagram. Like they, they post the photo on their page with a credit to me. And then that brings more people to see my photos. Um, but yeah, I've also got a bit of a YouTube channel where I'm just posting some of my travel videos and I'm active on Facebook a little bit as well, but mostly Instagram. Yeah. So I shared you uh, like uh, a video from last India tour and people just love it. It's a great video even. So we shared on uh, our YouTube channel called Echno Travels. Mm. So we are uh, like, um, I'll finger crossed. We are looking forward to travel with you again, like uh, our next holy trip in February. 2021 if everything's all right it, yeah. it will be, we'll run the tour and then I hope so. yeah do you have any other more post covid 19 pl plans after the thing settled down well just to get back into travel and tours again i mean the big change for me i can still teach piano during this period and, and i have been i've been teaching on my students i just oh, haven't been able to go away and do photo tours voluminous journeys and with techno when in india in the future We'll see if I can or not next year. Yes. So post COVID nineteen just means I can get back into working with my photo tours. Yeah. And for you, I'm sure it's a very important to get back yeah. to your work too. So yeah, we don't want to make it a bit long, very long to this uh, meeting. So do you want to say something? Uh, um, let's uh, let's let's hope we can all travel again to India as soon as possible because I yeah. can't wait to get back. Yeah. Let's hope it's early in 2021, we can go back to India. Yeah. And yeah, I think it will be interesting if when COVID finishes and we can all travel safely and yeah. will everyone be traveling and we'll be yes, lots of business yeah. suddenly and yeah. really busy. I hope people will want to travel again as, when, as soon as possible when we can. Okay. It'll be great to get back out again. Mm. So thank you, David. Thank you very much for giving uh, your time to us and hope to see you soon. In India. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, great to see you again, Vikas. I hope to see you yeah. soon. So, in uh, language of Parsana, we say Radhe Radhe. All right. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. <laughs> bye bye. Until next time. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye.